Good evening everyone. This will be a video going over exam one information. There's a link in um, the module uh, for the exam that you can download this sheet. Um, I will go over it in this video and if you have any questions also feel free to uh, email and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Um, in the exam tabs module you'll find uh, three links one will be to uh, this video and um, a this word document that I'm going over the second will be to the exam itself and the third will be to a uh, exam one work page uh, submission tab so the exam will be 50 points uh, it will open on Monday at 12.01 a.m. and close Tuesday night at 11.59 p.m. Uh, you will have three hours to complete the exam. Once you start the exam, you will only have one attempt and you cannot stop or pause once you have started the exam. Uh, the exam will go over one question at a time so you don't have everything in front of you, just one question at a time. There's a mix of questions of true, false, multiple choice, fill in the blank, and calculations to answer. Uh, on the exam, I will have a little uh, example um, answer uh, for you. It will be something expressed uh, either like percentage or decimal or answer with number variables to give you an idea of what and how I'd like you to answer it. Um, so please pay attention to that uh, as you're putting in your uh, answers to the uh, in the boxes. Uh, once you finish the exam, uh, one more thing about the three hours. Uh, you have three hours from when you start it. However, if you were to, for whatever reason, start it at 10 o'clock at night on Tuesday at 11.59, the exam will shut down and cut off uh, so it's not three hours uh, at that point from when you started the exam will shut off so start it three hours prior to the end date which will be on Tuesday at 11.59 uh, but once you have finished uh, the exam uh, you can upload your exam one problems that you worked out on a sheet uh, it's found in, uh, in an assignment tab f underneath uh, the exam tab uh, you do not have to get that in um, in a time frame other than before the exam officially closes. Uh, so please make sure you get that in uh, before the exam closes, but it doesn't have to be while you have the exam up. So let's move on to things you should study for for the exam. Uh, the exam, I believe, is 25 questions. Uh, like I said, it's a mix of true, false, multiple choice, fill in the blank, and calculation. Some questions have multiple parts to them. Uh, but there's 25 questions in total. Uh, things to study would be uh, categorical, ordinal, and quantitative measurements. Know um, what each type are. Uh, categorical being things that you can't put in order or don't have a number value associated with them. Ordinal would be things you can put in a rank order. And quantitative measurement would be numbers, whether they're ratios or um, actual just numbers themselves, it's a quantitative measurement. Uh, know how to use the random digit table. Uh, one of the questions you will have will be uh, a line from the random digit table and you have to figure out um, what number uh, what number physicians uh, get to be uh, get to partake in your study. So you have to know how to set up your table in order to find those physicians to get in the study. So please make sure you know how to use the random digit table. Know the difference between a, a variable, observation, and value. And then if you were to see a chart in front of you, know where each of those are located on the chart. Next, uh, know what positively bias means. Uh, which is a tendency to overestimate the true value. So if something's positively biased, it's in favor positively. So, for example, if you were uh, stepping on a scale and you were getting your weight, a positively biased would be something where the scale is adding weight to um, anybody who steps on it, or you are purposely adding weight to the scale if they were, if you were measuring people with clothes on. 
um, this would be a positive bias that we're overestimating the actual true value of someone's weight um, or any kind of instrument. So just know positively bias. Uh, know the main goals of biostatistics. Uh, know the difference between observation and experimental studies. Experimental studies would normally be you have uh, two groups, uh, one as a control group, the other as your uh, experimental group that you're introducing, like think pharmaceutical companies when they're testing new drugs, they're going to test to see the difference between the groups. An experimental study is an observation would be something where you observe um, behavior or changes or trends and um, want to observe them from a distance, uh, being the difference between the two different studies. Different levels of blinding, know the difference between um, uh, you know, single blind studies, double blind studies, and triple blind studies, and who was blinded in each one of those. Know how to calculate the average. Uh, know what would happen if you removed a positive uh, outlier from a data set. So if you had a data set and it had a positive outlier, so one that's above your upper fence limit, and you actually removed that particular data point from your set, what would actually happen to your data set? Know the difference between uh, platycuric and leptocuric, um, your different types of uh, lines uh, with your tails at the end of them, whether you have really skinny tails or big fat tails, um, and the different shapes uh, that you can have, but specifically between these two. Know how to calculate relative frequency. So if you were to have um, a question that, you know, uh, that dealt with school-age children and let's say like high schoolers and in the class you had a mix of uh, freshmen, sophomore, juniors, and seniors and you wanted to know what the relative frequency of seniors were in this class you would find out how many seniors were in this class uh, over the total number of people in the class and so y you would find out how many seniors are in at your relative frequency for the group. Uh, know how to get to your five point summary. So this would be your Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. So you have your min, max, median, your Q1, and your Q3. So your uh, your inner quartiles. Know how to uh, get those. Know how to calculate your IQR, your inner quartile range. Uh, you take your Q3 minus your Q1 and you get your inner quartile range and how you use this to calculate your upper and lower fences. Know how to describe a distribution with respect to the center and spread. Know what the center and spread are and how you write that. And then uh, lastly, know how to calculate the standard deviation in a sample set. Um, there is a video up from the Khan Academy that goes over how to calculate standard deviation. Many of you have probably done standard deviation before. Uh, the test will have uh, a couple standard deviation problems on it. Uh, the best thing I can tell you with standard deviation is uh, and, and the test is uh, make sure you submit your work when you're doing standard deviation. Um, it's very easy to make a small mistake and get a wrong answer uh, because there are many steps in calculating the standard deviation. But do know, uh, it, you know, by submitting your work, we would be able to go back and look and see uh, if there's at least mastery of the concept involved when uh, attempting the problem. I think uh, show and mastery uh, is a very key, important part, and that's why we can give partial credit there. But if you don't submit work, uh, we can't give partial credit. And if you don't, ha if you do submit work but don't have any work shown for that problem, or it's not clearly laid out, uh, and we have to hunt for it, that's not gonna um, bode well uh, for us trying to actually find w where everything is on on a sheet. Uh, so please make sure everything is labeled and organized so we can find it very easily. Uh, these are the things to know for the exam. If you know this stuff fairly well, there will be no surprises on the exam. Like I said, it's 25 questions. You'll have three hours to complete it. Um, if, you, if you complete it early, you'll be able to go back and look at the problems and uh, make sure they're done correctly. And if you have any other questions during the time, please feel free to reach out uh, in an email. Uh, good luck on the exam.